Lucky Boys Podcast. Have you ever heard of any Chinese associations? Yes. Like the Lam Association or the Wong Association mm -hmm. or the Fujianese Associ Association? I know where you're going with this. Where, where am I going with this? That a lot of today's generation don't, haven't heard about it. And therefore, or if they have, they're just not interested in it. So that's a dying club. Can I explain why? Because I've actually taken the time out to interview some of these people in these organizations. Sure. When I speak to the Chinese Merchants Association, association, I, I was put in touch with them because they needed to do a financial transaction on a building that they're looking to purchase or whatever. And I went over to their building and, you know, obviously to sit down with them and do an interview and figure out uh, what they're looking to do, etc. And when I walked in there, you know, the old Chinatown that I know, you know, the grandpa's grandma is playing Ma Jiao, right? MJ. And then you have like Guan Yu, the statue right in front with a million pots of incense. God of war. Everywhere. <laughs> the right? God of war. God of business. And when I walk in there, I see that, that old Chinatown feeling, right? Euphoric feeling, bringing you back to good times back in the day when you knew you were protected, right? And I asked them, you know, you're an association and you guys care about the Chinese community, but why is it that you don't have any youngsters that are working with you guys? And it's your average age is anywhere between 65 and 85. You know what he said to me? He said somewhere along the way between the 80s and the 90s, the membership just dropped off a cliff. And I said, how could that possibly be? Well, you know what he said? He said, we were starting to get finally accepted into society. And when new people are coming over, they no longer have to go to the associations to get to know the law of the land and understand how things work. We've already been ingrained to the American society so much that there was no longer a need. Now, I also put two and two together as well. What was there a rise of in the 80s and 90s culturally for Asian Americans to join in a group and project Asian awareness? I think we're a part of it and we can say that. What was, what was being born? Well, there are time. so many different, I mean, you, you want to talk about, there's a whole variety of that. Yeah. So it depends. It depends on your, uh, on, on your environment and where you fell in. So if it was the streets, you join, <clears throat> you join gangs, mm -hmm. right? You join uh, societies uh, that, that the criminal underworld or, or you just had, if you weren't <clears throat> a part of these gangs, then you were just a part of these cliques mm -hmm. that would hang around that environment but you wouldn't really be officially labeled under as that group of gang you'd just be your you you and your clique of boys and and that would become its own thing and if you were in schools if you were in colleges then you became part of a asian interest fraternity mm -hmm. those are the social clubs so and sorority and sororities yep. so there were just different different paths for that and and did that cons did that kind of uh consume with these other clubs absolutely uh, I could see that, but I think, it's I think, changing times. I think what ended up happening was our people started getting more educated. And our generation <clears throat> was the last generation of either street life or school life. And you had a major shift in kids actually going to colleges mm -hmm. to join these Asian interest fraternities and sororities, which <clears throat> then no longer had the need for these associations. And this is where you also see the dying end of Asian gangs because you had Giuliani who shook everything up, took apart the gangs. Usually, well, New York Asian gangs. Usually what happened was these kids would join the gangs. Did you know that the Chinese Merchants Association used to be involved in gangs? A lot of these uh, associations were, were uh, even from, from on the West Coast, they started as a as an association like that. And right. Evolved and into what something else. I saw as a pattern, and this is nothing against them, but what I saw as a pattern is the younger generation would start off in the gangs and rise through the ranks through the associations as they got older. Because nobody old wants to fight. It's all about you know money and business and et cetera, et cetera. Right. It's no longer about turf war or whatever yeah. it is, right? So that's where I saw 
that there was a drop right. in these association For membership the record, Chinese rates. gangs <clears throat> or Asian gangs, yep. they still are very present. Of course. For it, sure. What's changed is the front cover of it. Correct. Whereas back then, there was a, a lot of violence. Yes. Where you had to look turf over, wars. where you had to look over your shoulders, right. and it may not even have been turf war. It's just Asians in nature in, in in the gang world back in the day. You could just be walking by their street sure. or walking by them in a in a completely neutral ground, and maybe they don't like the way you look. But I felt and, and they go on the. But offensive. I feel like the need the need for nowadays joining, they don't have that. But I feel like the need to join that gang back then was to find brotherhood amongst your own people or. Protection. Family, yeah, protection amongst your own people to start off as that and then it turned into some sort of criminal culture, right? But at the end of the day, we were finally getting accepted into the American society because us even creating the idea of a Greek system, an Asian fraternity or sorority is the epitome of acceptance into the American culture, right? Mm -hmm. For uh, a college, right? So... As that happened, we also started diversifying. Our people, our generation, started hanging out with African-American kids, Spanish kids, white kids, and it was acceptable. And during that glimpse or period of time, you would still hear your subtle, you know, jokes of like, oh, you know, what, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, uh, the what are those, the fortune cookies say mm -hmm. today or mm -hmm. whatever it is just subtle hints. It wasn't subtle at all. <laughs> well, I'm just saying as time got along, <laughs> right? Like what. since 2000 till now, it there's subtle hints of jokes, but the people that are pitching these jokes don't understand that it is race racist for them to say it, right? But we have more or less rolled it off as oh, it's just a joke, when in reality. The racism has always been there with the older generation that portrays their ideal ideas or ideals down to their younger generation to portray their hate for us. So the, the thing is, I see that because that's more that's what to your point where you're talking about assimilation, right? Sure. So the more similar you are into American culture, yep. we should be when, when I look at it, that shouldn't be the the reason or the problem because since we're assimilated into american culture yeah. why is there still this you know because hatred i'll tell this, you why this. because we over the last 10 to 12 years we have had a heavy resurgence of new asian immigrants coming in predominantly from china mainland china but that's a that's a fine line though sure to i, I don't want i don't i don't want to like because it's a fine line to say like new chinese immigrants are coming in yes and because of that, it's okay. I mean, it's because it's of that. It's not okay at all. Right. It's, yeah. it's because of that, there's more racism that, towards there's Asian Americans. Renewed racism. Mm. Because the American culture doesn't understand these type of Chinese people, which are totally different from the original Chinese people that came here. And that's just plain wrong. You can't have like... Fantastic. We understand yeah. the obvious, which is wrong. The question here is how do we come to a common ground where there's peace, right? So we're going to have to talk about things that are uncomfortable. We're going right. to have to talk about reality. Which, which circles us back here. Sure. Where do we draw that concession? Because you say in order to get that peace, sure. we can't get 100% of everything we want. Yes. We'll have to concede.